365 is on the road here in Barcelona, Spain. We're at Mobile World Congress. We are here in the VMware brought by Broadcom booth. And it's been an exciting, exciting uh, show so far. And I mean, MWC is back. I mean, it was hard to get even through Hall 3 without having to maneuver, you know, like a like an ambulance going through the traffic. It's been pretty crazy. Yeah, the ambulance uh, actually is here in the VMware, but yeah, fortunately exactly. it's just a demo. But yeah, I've uh, what a decade of doing MWCs now with only the one year break where they, they, they took off. And I do know the shortcuts now. And the secret of Hall 3 is you don't walk down the middle of the aisle. You have to walk down the, the, the edges. Hall 3 is the epicenter of Mobile right. World Congress. And for those of us that are experienced in this for sure. But yeah, it's been a great event. Look, you know, you kind of see the, the worlds colliding. You know, you're seeing everything from the, the you know, apps running on mobile to edge network and compute. And of course, you, you hear a little bit of, you know, about cloud and, and transformation. I mean, maybe if you spend enough time, you'll get a little AI. I mean, nobody's really talking about AI, but like, you know, you yeah. get a little, you get security, you kind of get it all. I said, you know, over time, you've seen this become from a mobile to an operator, to a devices, to even a little bit of an enterprise show. But it is still really about the mobile, the operator, the network. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's been good so far. Well, Dan, one of the stalwarts of compute software, and in fact, uh, when I started at, at that ship company, the idea of virtualization w was a new thing, right? And everybody was like scared that we weren't going to sell any more servers because server consolidation, we need one server. Joking, of course. Uh, and VMware was the tip of the spear for that. And since then, they've taken their stack uh, to the edge, added containers, all the manageability, that, that you would want there. And we just happen to have Sadat from VMware to talk about edge compute. Welcome to 6.5, it's great to see you again. You know, seeing you at multiple companies, it's great to see you here at VMware. Hi, Dan, it's a pleasure to be here. And I'm so excited that you guys are here talking to all of us. Absolutely. This is, this is very good. Yes. Welcome. Super pleased to see Sadat on the docket. So, you know, the company's been in the edge space for what, two decades. Been a long time. Weren't you in high school then, Dan? <laughs> Actually, no. Sadly, I've, I have hit that inflection in my career now, where two decades only puts me in college. There we go. Um, but uh, talk a little bit about how you've kind of witnessed the space, the VMware perspective. How has the, the, the edge space evolved over the last few years, few decades? Yeah. Well, thank you, Dan. I think uh, we have come a long way. There is no question about that. So I started off uh, in this uh, edge IoT area uh, over 20 years back. I started the IoT services organization at Cisco, was doing uh, intelligent edge at HP before running this uh, business, edge computing business at VMware. So when I started off in this area, it was not very clear. People were still not convinced that digitalization and technology could actually help them change how they did things at the edge. So if you were a retail store manager, it was hard for you to conceive how all this technology with the cameras and all that is going to help you reduce theft. If you're a factory floor manager, it was almost unthinkable that you'll put stuff on your factory which could shut down and bring your entire factory down. It was Not a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was unheard of. So we've come a long way, right? So there's a lot of acceptance that the outcomes that we want to achieve at, uh, for these businesses, they can be delivered by what Edge does, by what technology and digitalization at the Edge does. However, that outcome being there, now we are at a different stage of our journey. Where our customers are telling us that uh, it's great, we agree, we understand, we accept that technology and digitalization will deliver outcomes at the edge, but we don't just want outcomes. We now want experiences. We want stellar experiences which will cement people in the outcome that we achieve. So that's, what, that, that's the part of the journey that uh, I have joined VMware by Broadcom on where we are building a platform which would allow our customers to achieve that experience at the edge. So not just deliver outcomes, but actually take it to an experience which is world class. So uh, VMware was one of the early movers on talking about the software defined uh, edge. And like all VMware products and services, started off as a project, right? Uh, which is a declaration to the world that you're building something and we solicit your input and we want, we want to make it really good and also involve uh, partners. How does Edge Compute 
and software defined edge intersect. I mean, maybe it's very straightforward, which is, you know, compute is software defined. It's nothing without it, but I think it's a little bit more comprehensive than that. Can you talk us through that? Absolutely. So let me, let me share an actual real world example, which would bring this home, right? This idea home. So um, when I work with our customers in the manufacturing space on the factory floor, for decades, right, literally decades, maybe 100 years more, they've been stuck in this environment, right, where the hardware and the software that they have for PLCs and the other components on the factory floor, they're stacked together. They go hand in glove, right? The hardware that you get, the software that you get, they are together, you cannot separate them. It's not like you want a different software, you can just put it on there, right. it's nothing like that. It's a very closed system. Very close system, and now they're looking to change that. They have seen how software has changed other industries, and they want software to change their way of working as well. It is very clear, right? The acceptance is there. So now what they're saying is that, okay, on the PLC front, for example, let's separate out the hardware and the software. We'll get the best of breed hardware, which works in our environment. Right. We'll get the best of breed software, which works in our environment, put them together, and when we want to change the software, not just upgrade, but even change it to something better, we can do that with the flexibility that everyone in the industry in the IT industry enjoys. That's what we call disaggregation, and that's at the foundation at the core of software-defined edge. So what we're building, essentially, in this case, is a software-defined factory floor, where the things that are done in the factory floor, when, which used to be hardware-centric in the past, are now going to be software-centric, defined and built on top of the software that we are bringing to the table. So this is about virtual PLCs. People used to talk about that. Uh, colleagues of mine at sure. Cisco, we used to dream about having virtual PLCs on the factory floor one day. It's real now. It is happening right now. Yeah, and the first movers, I mean, the folks who are leaders in manufacturing, 100% have moved in, in, that, in that direction. Yeah. They yeah. have. It's, it's interesting, you bring up the factory floor. We're obviously here at Mobile World, so the telco edge, I mean, are there other environments, Sadat, that you see this edge compute really, really shining? Uh, any other examples you might want to share? I mean, there's lots of examples. Uh, and if you think about uh, the various verticals, right, the two big verticals where there's a lot of work happening is manufacturing and retail. That's where the digitalization is happening at the edge. In the retail environments, we have stores, right, where the store managers want to put 20 plus apps in a single store because of things that they want to achieve. They want to do point of sale, they want to do theft reduction, they want to look at the customer sentiment, they want to do employee management, they want to do a ton of stuff within a given store, and for that they want compute in there. But I think uh, I'll reverse the question a little bit, right? So the question I think is, uh, uh, should not be that, uh, because a lot of people when you ask them the question that uh, where is edge compute gonna be relevant, they start thinking about the constraints that Edge poses and which verticals have the constraints, meaning small amount of space, low amount of power, connectivity issues. The way I think about it is the opposite, right? Edge actually presents a lot of advantages. You're very close to where the data is being produced. You're very close to the people who are actually running the business, the people in the store, the f f workers on the factory floor. All these people, right, are very close to what's actually happening. So your ability to take advantage of that is, ne is not greater in any other place in your environment than the edge. So that is a game changer, right? right? And that's going to be a game changer for all verticals. So my answer to your question is, there is no vertical where in the future I don't see edge compute. I see it everywhere because of the advantages that edge brings rather than the constraints it has. I noticed this yellow vehicle uh, over over your shoulder here, and we we know because uh, we interviewed uh, one of your counterparts about SD WAN. Now, architecturally, there could be and should be compute in yes. in here. Correct. There is. there is absolutely. So let me give you guys a little bit of context here, right? So when uh, in the industry, when we look at the edge, right, there are two kind of extremes. There is the enterprise edge, and there is the operational edge. Enterprise edge is where all the knowledge workers are, right? The office spaces where people are using information, knowledge to do things, right? Come up with ideas. A lot of us fall into that category, right? That's the uh, enterprise edge. On the opposite end of that is the operational edge, right? This is the oil and gas fields. This is the factory floor environment. OT. OT, right? Yes. That's the term that we typically use. IT and OT. 
hospitals and are somewhere in the middle. Right, so they have the knowledge worker aspect of things. Right. So they're the doctors, the technicians trying to figure out ideas, what to do with certain situations. And then there's the operational aspect where there's all this equipment that has to come to bear to help save people's lives. So this is what I describe as a hybrid environment. And this is, this is an environment, right, which is ripe for disruption with edge computing. So what you see here is a hospital. It's not just any hospital, it's yes. a hospital on wheels. Got it. So what we are doing in this particular demo is that we are solving for both those challenges, the knowledge worker challenge and the operational challenge. So the operational challenge, I'll share with, that, uh, share with you that first. There is equipment in this, uh, in this ambulance that is critical for saving, people, uh, saving lives when the time comes. Imagine if for some reason they forgot to bring two of the critical pieces of equipment when they were trying to resuscitate somebody how big of an impact that would be for that person and their family. It's life or death. It's life or death. So what we have, right, as part of the solution is an inventory management solution, which live looks at what the equipment is there and identifies if there is any critical piece of equipment that is missing. That's the operational side. Then comes the knowledge worker side, right? So you have technicians in this ambulance who are very skilled people, right? They save people's lives every day. But think about it. There are people back in the hospital as well, who perhaps will have a little bit more experience in some of the specific issue that that person right. is having. Maybe an emergency room doctor, as an example. When I was at HP, we were dealing with a situation in Ukraine, right, where there were bomb blast uh, injuries, which doctors on the ground in Ukraine were not able to handle because they right. had no experience in that. But we were able to connect them with people in other countries who did have experience. Right. So doctors also have specializations, right? So the knowledge worker aspect of this ambulance is that we put a goggle on uh, a person, right, a VR goggle, and the doctor back home, right, in the hospital is able to connect through that, see what's going on, and help the technician address yeah. that issue. So this is enabled both through the SD-WAN connectivity that we have, but also the compute that allows all this interaction to happen very quickly. You don't want any delay, right, in making any of this work. You don't want the information that is appearing on the goggles to be delayed even by a second. That could mean the difference between life and death here. So this is what, frankly, what excites me about this area. Matt. I mean, the ability to impact people's lives is, there is no other area in IT which, other than edge, where you can make that happen. So that's why I'm excited about this. Yeah, it, the, the use cases applications sound very encouraging. And of course, the idea that you can get something factually right that could save a life. You know, Pat, you and I have always said, like, you know, when, like when we're working on a weekend, you know, why are we, we doing do this? Why are yeah. we doing this? This isn't life or death. Well, right. it actually turns out that the kind of higher up the stack you go, the more you kind of start to realize that what we do and the deployment of the right infrastructure and helping companies get to the right product, services, solutions can, in fact, exactly. be life or death. Yeah. And so I love that, Sadat. So, so let's wrap up with something that you know, I think a lot of people are probably asking, you know, we, we made the joke in the beginning about AI, and I'm not actually gonna ask an AI question, but I know we were talking to one CEO here at the show, and he kind of said that people know they need to do AI, but they don't really know what yet they need to do, so they're just kind of spending money and throwing it. Well, with Edge and Compute, I think they, they, they have a good understanding of what's needed. You know, you gotta remove latency, you gotta make systems available all the time in motion, like you gave an example. But there are challenges. Deploying a, a network, especially things that are mobile and moving, are very complicated. What are the challenges that you're seeing and those in your business are seeing with customers? And what, is, you know, what are you sort of recommending to those that are trying to get this right? Uh, how, 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 do you, how do you give them the guidance to proceed? That's a great question. Uh, I, I think edge and AI are two of the hottest areas and they're coming together in this big ball of fire right now. Yes. So uh, the interesting thing about edge is it's so close to outcomes that you cannot dance around the issue of whether AI will work or not. It has to work, right? If a robot is swinging in a factory and the camera, the computer vision camera catches that the, fact the robot arm is going to hit a person, there has to be a decision right there and then to stop it. And there are no ifs and buts about it. So it's, it makes AI, uh, the AI has to be very real. So let me tell you the challenges that uh, I'm seeing, right? The challenges that we typically see with um, edge environments in terms of the small amount of compute that is available, the connectivity back and forth with a central location, 
those things are true for are challenges for any application, but they're also challenges for AI. So uh, models which are very large are difficult to run in these environments. So model pruning, making sure that you reduce the amount of uh, uh, the size of the model right. without giving up on the accuracy, that is important. There's an interesting concept that we are working on. Um, so the edge compute stack, this is the platform that we are bringing to our customers to make edge deployment super easy. Part of that platform is this thing called VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator. So generally what Orchestrator does, right, it basically helps you deploy in a zero-touch manner, like you have 5,000 stores, it will help you deploy that in an easy way, and then manage it. For AI, it does something very beautiful. So there's this concept of federated learning, right? So let's say you have 500 uh, factory floors, each uh, factory floors, on each factory floor you're doing QA, right, of some device that you're building. It's being built in 500 factories. So what we do is that instead of pushing the raw data up into the cloud or some central data center where it's all going to be analyzed and uh, learning is going to take place and uh, some sort of a model is going to be built for uh, inferencing. Instead of doing that, right, we do the learning in each one of those factories separately. And then the only thing that is fed up is the model that is created based on that. Then all of that is brought together into one super model which then is sp uh, spread out. So VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator actually makes that federated learning come to life. So these are some of the things, right, that have to be done to make AI real. But one thing is very clear, uh, Edge customers don't beat about the bush when it comes to whether AI works or not. It better work. Right. What if I ask a follow-up question on, on something we talked about, kind of jog my memory. Yeah. So you talked about the disaggregation and some of the benefits in traditional manufacturing systems, but here we are talking about aggregating compute and connectivity. Can you talk to me about why disaggregating, well, we talked about why disaggregating is, but why is re-aggregating good? No, yeah, that's, a, that's a very uh, insightful question. Uh, Pat. So I think uh, it's important to realize that there are benefits and, and disadvantages and disadvantages of any kind of yeah. uh, thing that you do, whether it's aggregation, disaggregation. So the advantage that we see of connecting the connectivity layer with the compute layer, as well as the application layer. So we kind of and combine- And by the way. Yeah. So, and security. Security as, well. security as well. Right. The advantage that we see is that the compute, right, it understands what's going on in the application layer and can tweak what's going on on that connectivity layer. So for example, I'll give you an example of a retailer. Uh, they have like 800 stores. At any given time, 30 to 40 percent in USA, 30 to 40 percent of those stores are un disconnected. Right. So, for the compute to know, right, that this is the situation and tailor that connectivity based on when that connection is available, how expensive it is, and all that, that is very valuable to our customers. But I, I am with you. There are also disadvantages when you connect things. So, listen, the industry is clearly moving uh, towards. Aggregation is good when there's a clear incremental benefit between, between the layers. And all things equal, as you get into a more space-constrained environment, I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to correlate the smartphone or the tablet with, with edge compute, but it's like you know, tight integration seems to be more important the smaller the environment that you have to operate in. And, I'm also, I'm not confused that the edge can, can be, you know, the compute in, in the hospital, in the ambulance, but also raised tile flooring in a gigantic retailer. But you have to, all things equal, there seems to be a preference to have some integration when there's incremental benefit. So I, I appreciate you, I don't know, acknowledging what I thought was the answer, but well, I wanted to ask yeah. you. The analyst is going to go ahead and ask a question <laughs> that he wants to get an affirmative on. He, um, well, the funny thing is that you mentioned, like, there is a, a bit of fun. I think Sada, this goes back to interviews we had years ago, is the edge has just kind of got this incredibly amorphous sort of definition, right? It does. And so what we're kind of talking about is this kind of critical edge layer. Of yeah. course, you sort of mentioned, but like, you know, as you move into the future of more VR and metaverse, right. and you move into device-driven futures and being able to, you know, the factory floor, someone's got a device and they got a network slice and they need an edge yeah. network and then they need, you know, all that stuff, that, that reliability layer is, is super duper important. Um, that these things are interconnected and no matter what your definition of the edge is, this stuff all does really have to work together. 
Absolutely. And it's not just um, the products from one company, right? The beautiful thing about Edge is that an ecosystem of companies have to come together and they're forced to an outcome that the customer wants. Right. So it's a very, it's very customer driven environment and it's not, it's so close, the environment is so close to the outcomes that all of these vendors are forced to work together for the benefit of the customer yes. and the outcome. It's a good thing. It's a, which is a wonderful thing. And, and for the benefit of the customer is a great way, Sadat, to end this show. Hey, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been great having you over the years. It's great to have you back on the show here at VMware. Let's have you back again soon. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you guys today. Thanks. Thank you. All right, everybody. We are here at MWC 2024 in Barcelona in the VMware by Broadcom booth. Woo, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Appreciate everyone tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our other coverage here at NWC. And of course, join us and be part of the 6.5 community. But for this episode, for Patrick and myself, it's time to say goodbye. See y'all later.